What we as Floridians don't want is we don't want to be the next California. I'm sure the people who left there don't want that either. Why is it so expensive here, Carter? In 2021, people were buying houses in cash over asking, you know, 30,000, 50,000 over asking sometimes. When that happens, that means that the values in that area are going to increase. Now for us Floridians, we look at that and we go, damn, how the hell are we going to compete? Okay, everybody, today is Finding Floridians with Carter Long. Carter, where are the Floridians? In Florida. Where the heck are they? Where are we finding them? You're, um, you're, what, what you've created is amazing. Yeah, Tyler, refresh that. What you've created is really cool because in the same way that Zillow kind of changed the game of how people connect to real estate and find real estate on their own, as much as I hate that as an agent, it's the natural progression of technology. I think you've created a space on social media where people can find rentals, places for sale. It's super dope. Thanks. It's been exciting. How'd uh, you come up with this idea, Carter? So I myself was, or I guess still am. I myself am in real estate. Um, on I am a licensed mortgage lender, although I am not a practicing lender anymore because of this. Um, I really just saw the need for people to understand the actual cost of living in Florida. Yeah. And so there's obviously other people who do things similar in terms of, you know, asking how much do you pay for rent? But this is a little bit more encompassing. It's not just renters. It is how much is your home currently worth as someone who is a homeowner? So if you were to move to the state of Florida or move from a different area of Florida to the Tampa Bay area, you're going to see exactly what a home would cost if you were to move to that area that day. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure there's a huge discrepancy between people that have lived here because they can see what the prices are, what they've paid in the past, and then people moving here. Like people moving here might go, wow, this is a great deal. I can live in Florida for, you know, a relatively low cost if I'm coming from New York or LA or a bigger metro. You see some fighting in the comments about that? Oh, 100%. Um, but that's definitely the person that it really is a little bit more geared to. Mm -hmm. um, not to say that I don't have, you know, native Floridians. I myself am a native Floridian. A lot of people who do follow me are native Floridians. And I would say I feature about 50-50, like native mm. versus people who have relocated. Um, I am under the belief that anyone who's lived in Florida for um, more than 183 days, because that's legal, is a Floridian, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah, let's talk about that. You posted something recently. People were mad at you, right? Mm -hmm. And what were they mad about? They were saying a true Floridian has to be born here. Was that the argument they were making? It actually was a little bit more. So it kind of goes back to your original question of people hating in the comments, right? And so there are a lot of would you say native Floridians who may, their families may be here or they were born here who are upset about all the people who are moving here um, due to, you know, cost of living increasing, which we can kind of go into in a little bit. But, uh, but yeah, so they, you know, are hating on that fact. And so I thought I'm intrigued because I get so many comments of, oh, you're not a Floridian mm. because you haven't lived here your whole life. And I'm like, that's interesting because I'm, I'm a fourth, fifth generation Floridian. Like my family has been here forever. My grandmother lived in, lived in Seminole Heights. Like wow. way, way back. Yeah. So um, family's been here. And so as someone who is a native Floridian, I'm kind of like, y'all, we got to shed, shed the love, yeah. share the love of Florida, you know? But I guess people have a different opinion. And then they were saying, what was like the consensus of the other side? They were saying, you're not a Floridian unless you were born here. Or what was their argument? Family born here. Family was born here. So generations of living in Florida. That is, what do they call that for the presidential nationalist? For like to be president of the United States. Well, no, you just have to be born here. You have to be born here. Yeah, but that's if a lot. both of your parents are American, that makes you American too. Even if you're, even if you were born outside of the United States. Correct. Yeah. So say you're a so military. They were, they were making that same argument, right? Essentially. Essentially. Yeah. <laughs> and so obviously, I made like a very dramatic argument of you know, say you're a person who's not from America, but you move to America, and yeah. then you get your citizenship. Like, does that make them not American? Right. You know, yeah. and obviously it's, it is different. Like it doesn't a hundred percent correlate, but it gets people thinking of 
no, actually that thinking is a little bit closed minded. Well, it's very closed minded because we're in such a transient place. I mean, mm-hmm. millions of people have moved to Florida in the last few years and that's always occurred. People have always retired here. I mean, honestly, we're a rarity. We we are a rarity. The fact that we have multi generations in Florida, I mean, mm-hmm. you you rarely meet people like that. You know, so so I get why people are, are having, you know, issues with that, but at the same time it's like, who cares? I don't know. There's a bunch of people moving here. Get used to it, right? Yeah. I mean, people are going to complain about things that upset them. So I get it. But I'm the type of person who I'm po- positive outlook. Yeah. You know, I'm going to have twist the perspective to how can I make this better? Because living in hate and in negativity, that's what your life is going to be. You it's know? true. Yeah. Focus on the bright side, as they say. Mm-hmm. So this page, when did you actually launch this? My first video was posted the last week of January in 2023. So once this airs, it'll be a year. One whole year. Incredible. You have over 15,000 followers. Are you surprised at the growth? I am. Yeah. Um, it definitely was a journey. So I'm also on TikTok. Um, and so between and, and YouTube, that's not a focus, but um I am on all the different social media platforms. Mm. Um, so between all of them, I have over 35,000. So it's awesome for one year. Yes. So it's, it's cool. It's awesome. Um, I am surprised at the growth. It doesn't, doesn't mean that it wasn't a challenge to get here. Oh, of course. Yeah. We know that too. I mean, we've been rolling for about a year now. I think our first episode was in February last year. So we're coming up on one year ourselves and it is challenging. It's not easy, but it's fun. It's fun. The content thing is fun. It's I, fun. I didn't, I had always wanted to do something, whether it was YouTube or something on social media, just because it's fun. But I think there's value you can provide to people and that's why they're interested. And that's why I think we've grown very well. First of all, both of the handles of our names are great, right? F- finding Floridians. I don't know how that wasn't taken. Is that the first thing you search for when you're looking for a handle? Um, honestly, I don't remember. Um, I think I I wanted to do like how did I come up with the name? That's a really great question. Um, I wanted to do alliteration. I, it honestly it just came to me like yeah, finding flirting. And you were like, hey, let's just try this. Oh, it's available. Weird. Boop, yep. Done. Simple as that. Yeah. Same for us. It was like Tampa Bay developer, cool name. Oh, it's not taken. Weird. All right. Well, I'll take it. Yeah, I'm meant to be. So we were talking before we went live about affordability. That Mm -hmm. is a huge question. Um, And where were we in that conversation? People were asking you why it has become so expensive to buy a home or to rent a home. And you were explaining it, I guess, through your mortgage lens, really. Mm -hmm. So walk me through that. Why is it so expensive here, Carter? Well, I do think there's a lot of different reasons, but one reason in particular from the mortgage side that we've noticed is, is when cash buyers come in, you know, they, in 2021 and 2020, people were buying houses in cash over asking, you know, 30,000, 50,000 over asking sometimes. And when that happens, um, that means that the values in that area are going to increase because Mm -hmm. comps, which are which are what you use, what appraisal, um, a property appraisers would use to measure the value of a property. They're going to use comparable prices, which are known as comps, right? And so if a house sold, say in that neighborhood, three houses were cash offers and they were 30 to 50,000 over asking. And then you have two houses that, you know, were just a regular deal then the three are going to outweigh that too, right? Mm. So the pricing is going to increase to what that cash buyer purchased because basically the consumer is saying, this is how much it's worth. Like this is the value of which I'm willing to pay. Right. Um, and so because of that, you know, the the properties increased higher due to partially cash buyers as well as other things, you know? Yeah. There's, I feel like there's a lot of factors. That's certainly one of them. Yeah. Buyers dictate the market. I mean, us Mm -hmm. brokers say that all the time, right? Buyers really do dictate the market. They are the ones buying the home. And if they're only willing to pay a certain amount, then they're only willing to pay that amount. 
and there's there's all the factors are compounding at one time. That's the mm-hmm. real reason it's so expensive. You do have a cash buyer perspective, but you also have to keep in mind at the same time, there's always been cash buyers here. Mm-hmm. Now there's more coming here. There's more coming here. They're moving their businesses. They're retiring. They're retiring early to come down here. Some of them are ex- escaping all the crazy you know, cities and states around the entire country too. That's a big factor. I think California lost for the first time in its history since 2020, hundreds of thousands of people. Most of them are going to Texas, but a lot of them are coming to Florida and those people have cash Mm -hmm. and those people are coming from a place where they look at our real estate and they think, wow, we're getting a great deal. Now for us Floridians, the real Floridians, we look at that and we go, damn, how the hell are we going to compete? And yep. that, I think, is the question. That's the real question. How can a native Floridian, a young person like us, trying to make a living, trying to save money, hoping to buy a home one day? I mean, I'm looking for a home right now. It's hard for me to find something. Mm-hmm. That's the real issue is the people that have lived here and grew up here didn't have time to catch up. You know, we gra- by the time we graduated college, I graduated college in 2015. It's been less than 10 years. And when I graduated college in 2015, I don't know if there would be a way to look this up, Tyler, but I think the average home price in Tampa might have been in the twos or threes. It was probably half or less than what it is now. Oh, yeah. So someone like me who graduated college less than 10 years ago, I mean, it it would have I would have had to have thread the needle of good job, save money, make the right moves financially to even have a chance at buying a home now. It's Mm -hmm. that's where it's unfortunate. The people moving here with cash, the people moving from New York City from a nice apartment that was six grand a month, you know, I don't know that we feel bad for those people. Those are kind of the people that are causing the problem. Right. right? And that's what everyone would say. Right. That's the the issue. (laughs) And I'm sure you do get people going back and forth in the comments fighting over it. It's a big deal. It is. It is. And I don't know the solution. I think the solution is we need to build more. That's kind of a different topic. We've talked about that on the show a lot, how increasing supply would help ease demand as it does. But but that also someone's got to figure something out. But the amount of things. So even if I were when I do post new construction, even the hate of why are they destroying Florida land? (laughs) You know, you I just can never win. win. (laughs) Yeah, that's a good point, too, man. I mean, I, you know. My, my parents divorced. My mom's side of the family lives in Sarasota. My dad's in Tampa. So growing up, I made that I-75 trek between those two cities. I've made that trek a thousand times since I was 16 years old. And it's kind of sad now. You drive down 75 and almost the entire way is suburban. That used to be like you were driving between two cities and there's pastures and cows and beautiful trees. Now it's like everything is completely overbuilt. That part of it is sad. The urban Mm -hmm. sprawl is sad. I don't know. We should build in cities. Keep the cities cities and keep the pastures pastures, right? Yeah. I don't know. It's not for us to figure out. But if people want to point the finger, you should point the finger at the sprawl because that's destroying, that's increasing traffic because Mm -hmm. you're not going to get public transit out in the suburbs. So now all those people that live there that want to go to the city or want to go shopping, they're going to be on the highways now. So that's increased traffic. You're bulldozing all the trees and the pasture land. So it's environmental. Point the finger at the urban sprawl people. Okay. But then how do you lessen that? Like what is the solution of telling people, no, you own that land, but you can't build on it? Well, it's a property rights question. You're right. I mean, a fundamental, um, golden ticket we have in this country is our property rights. It's a Mm -hmm. fantastic thing. It's actually what makes this country great is all all of the bundle of rights that come with ownership of property. And you're correct in that saying to a developer, hey, you can't build that even though you own the land. We're the government and we're telling you you can't do what you want with land you own. It's a serious thing. I mean, that at its core is the fundamental argument. I believe just like with anything else, there's regulations on everything, mm-hmm. especially here in Florida where we do have a smaller state. Maybe we're a medium-sized state. I wouldn't say we're big in landmass, though. Point is, we don't have yeah, a lot we're of long, land. But to we're sp- thin. Yeah, yeah. We're <laughs> lanky. We're a lanky state. We don't have a lot of room to sprawl. I mean, before you know it, the east and the west coast is just going to all come together and like 
Florida is just going to be one city. Right. I think every native Floridian will recognize that before someone who's just moving here. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? If the, if you're moving from California, I mean, that place is already so built out. You probably come here and go, wow, look at all the wide open spaces. But right. people like you and I that grew up here, damn, I'm kind of, I don't know, like I'm saddened to see all the urban sprawl. Mm-hmm. I think the solution back to your question though, is more dense development in the cities that already exist. Yeah. That makes um, sense. You know, don't build like a strip mall or like a car centric development in the middle of a city. Mm. Make it dense, like the Northeast, right. you know, make it dense so everyone can kind of live in, in a city. I think our uh, our generation wants that anyway. Like we want walkability. We want to be able to go mm-hmm. downstairs and go to the grocery store and all that. So I think focusing on that as a local government and as a county level government is a good move. I mean, we're... I'm 31. I feel like by the time I'm my dad's age, my dad is 70. If we keep on this path, oh my God, there's not going to be any green space left. Like, and because of that, the traffic is only going to get worse. Mm -hmm. You know, all of the problems we have are only going to get worse. So we need to figure out a way to manage it. Well, yeah, because I think what we as Floridians don't want is we don't want to be the next California. That is not what we want, nor I'm sure the people who left there don't want that either. So if we don't want the happen, what not to happen, I think as a, as a person who lives here, you know, what is the best way to figure that out? And, you know, is it our, our public officials? Is it people in the government? Like, what is it? Yeah. Probably. Yes. Yeah. It's a good question. Like who is the entity to save us? Like, is it, is it the, the developers getting together and deciding that, hey, let's not, yeah, you're shaking yeah, right. your head. That of would course. never happen. They're well, in it for the money. Right. Not all of them, but I mean, yeah, you're a developer and the things that you develop make you money, right? Ah, uh, America. So anything that's profit driven is going to have issues. Yeah. You know, I but mean, there are like different shareholders, right? So right. there are a lot of people from different areas that really can come together and we can find a solution. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that, you know, complaining on social media is actually not helpful. And what would be helpful is maybe go talk to your, talk to the person who's in your local government mm-hmm. who actually has a say over something, you know? Well, I think it's coming, but I also believe that in the beginning, People have to get pissed off in this country for things to change. Yeah, that's fair. You know, just the same reason why a bus has to legally stop before a railroad track. Well, (laughs) that's because a bus got hit by a train. People got upset and they lobbied the government to make a law that says bus have to stop at railroad tracks, right? So I think in the beginning, you're going to have this fighting. Mm -hmm. And instead of fighting in the public square... They're going to fight on finding Floridians, ah, right? Yeah, that's a good point. It's, good this point. is just the beginning. Maybe you could put something up like, hey, instead of fighting in the comments, why don't y'all go fight in the city council chamber? You know? Yeah, and that's true. <laughs> that's use true. your page for good. I'm trying, trying. Recently, I've been more in the stories. Have you focused? So the original idea, like you said, was just to showcase kind of apartments and homes and stuff like that. Has mm-hmm. it evolved into something else? Or are you still focused on that one thing? Still focused on that, uh, really wanting to show the actual cost of living. I think that that's important because, you know, one, just as we're talking about, we have the Floridians who have been here, don't know how the prices have come to where they've come, right? So educating in terms of here are the prices. Then you have the people who are who are from out of state and they're like, oh, it's so cheap to live in Florida. Well, now it's not necessarily as cheap as it once was. So to be aware that you might not find something cheaper in the area of what you're looking for. You know, if you're living in the city of New York and you're looking to move to the city of St. Pete, yeah, it might be a little cheaper, but it's not going to be the wide span that it once was. Mm, Which is crazy to think about. Yeah. The fact that you could move from New York to St. Pete and have some sort of a comparable rent payment. I mean, that's kind of wild. Yeah. I mean, the... the (laughs) I'm not going to out them, but the, uh, the most expensive apartment I've done, um, well, I haven't. Let's pull it up. Tyler. Well, it's not released. Oh, it's soon to come. It's soon to come. Stay tuned, people. Can you reveal like price and stuff and info? Yeah. So, um, basically, I mean, it's the Heron. 
Okay, yeah. Right? So the Heron, for those who don't know, is on Water Street. Water Street in Tampa is the most expensive area um, in in this area, Tampa Bay. I mean, it's more expensive than downtown St. Pete. Um, And so, I mean, the minimum just for a studio there is 3K, Mm -hmm. you know, and... And it's a, it's a beautiful place, but this is a perfect example of someone who may want to be moving from the city to another city. This is what you're paying now. You know, it, it is more expensive. The top unit for this place is over 7000 a month. Mm. You know, that's New York prices right there. It really is. You're probably getting more for your money here. I mean, I'm sure it's a bigger oh, space, yeah. but $7,000 is a crazy amount of money to yeah. pay for rent. Granted, I'm sure you get... A huge unit, probably what three bedroom, two. Damn, people are gonna eviscerate. Unfortunately, whoever this person yeah, is in the so comments, but they just don't get it. You know, that they're, they're in a one, different circumstance. The seven, the seven thousand one actually decided not to do a tour because of the comments. So, if y'all want to see that stuff, stop hating in the comments. Yeah, stop hating people. Go to floor plans, Tyler. You know, and another thing about this Water Street development, it should be the most expensive in the area. Yeah. It's the nicest with the yep. most amenities and the most brand new. I mean, why wouldn't it be the most expensive? Right. People need to get real too. I mean, we're, we're, you know, we're, we're sitting here talking about the discrepancy between Floridians and other people, but people also need to understand we live in an area where a ton of people want to live. There's mm-hmm. a ton of people moving here. Because of that, you have a crazy amount of demand and prices are going to go up. There's places in Florida that have still cheap rent, but they're not going to be Water Street, Tampa. B5. There it is, B5. So it's a two-bedroom, two-bath Where'd it go? Okay, hold on, Tyler. Two bedroom, two bath, 1,461 square feet, under 1,500 square feet from, now you know what from means, minimum, 7,270 a month. 7,270 a month. Now, if you want an extra parking spot, right, if you want like the VIP trash service, they're going to tack on uh, some fees onto that. Right, and that might not even be... The, that's just base rent. I mean, in reality, that is. That's base rent, right? So that's what you're paying just for the space. Every apartment complex like this with amenities, they have added fees onto it. That's standard. Every mm-hmm. apartment complex that you're going to rent at, they have additional prices. So when you are on the website and you're looking at what the cost is, that really is base rent. Mm-hmm. So that might change you know, some of your people's budgets as they're as they're looking because something like this probably has, you know, two, three hundred, four hundred dollars more for all the extra things that they are, that are required. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like they're optional. I think an interesting thing, too, about a development like this is it does capture a lot of the air quote luxury renter that's looking for property like this. Absolutely. And native Floridians need to understand that had this development not been built, all of those people were still going to move here anyway, and now they're going to be in your apartment complex and in your neighborhood. That's fair. And your prices are going to skyrocket. So it's kind of nice that this was built. Really weird timing, right? Like it was finished up right as COVID happened and a million people moved here. So it, it just sucked in a lot of that uh, growth and demand. Yeah. So yeah. I guess that's a silver lining. It is. But what's funny is, you know, people are asking for more affordable places, but when I post them, like... Tyler, go back to the Instagram, click on the Reels tab. So you can really see, I'm going to show you a difference between one that was $3,700 a month that was posted just a couple weeks earlier. So it goes to the Reels tab. And then one that was for $1,300 a month. So if you stop right there, the one that says South St. Pete Carriage, that's actually Southeast St. Pete Carriage House. So that has 14,000 views. And, you know, there, if you, oh, it doesn't show on here, but there's less comments and likes while if you exit out of that one, Tyler, and go to the one that says channel side, that has 159,000 views. These are all posted within a similar timeline, yet obviously the 1300 is way cheaper, but people aren't watching it. Well, Instagram's tricky with the algorithm and, and all that sort of stuff. I actually used to live in this building. This is Ventana and channel side. Yes, it is. And people are commenting... How can one person afford this? I think it'd be awesome if you could include someone's profession. I may just be a jaded teacher, but 3700 doesn't seem practical. 
people just needs to understand that it's it's people do have different professions. Some mm-hmm. people have family money. Too bad. It is what it is. Some yeah. people have trust funds. I don't. I wish I did. Right? But I'm not going to get on here and complain about it. Yeah. And you just about, for the record. Yeah. The um, everyone's occupation and what they do is in every single caption. Oh, Lord. just for the record. Yeah. So check that out, people. Yeah. I mean, that is a lot of money for one person, mm-hmm. unfortunately. And kind of like what what we were talking about earlier. You know, if you just graduate college, when I graduated college, like 50,000 was pretty good. If you had 60 plus in your salary, it was like, damn, like you got a good job out of college. You, you make 60 grand a year. You can't afford $3,700 a month rent. Oh, no, but she's not just out of college. You know, she is established in her career. So I think that's another thing, too, people need to realize is that I'm not interviewing 18, 23 year olds for the mm. most part. Majority of my, the people that are, are in this, they are either late twenties or early thirties. That really millennial, younger millennial is who really this account attracts. Right. Um, but also who is being featured. So we are a little bit more established in our careers and, you know, we have had that time to grow. Mm -hmm. So I think that is another point of this isn't someone who is who just graduated college and is in her starter job. No, she worked her way up and and she's doing well for herself. And I do think you put a sort of sorry. Go that's ahead. okay. I think that's something to celebrate rather than hate. Yeah, you go girl, good for you type stuff, right? Yeah. And also, do you put demographics in the comments like age, occupation, stuff like that? Not age, but occupation, occupation. is in there. Yeah, I, I don't. I mean, I think someone looking for the demographic information is just looking to compare themselves Mm -hmm. to whoever's on the video. And I don't think that's a healthy thing. I mean, people can only afford what works for them. And you're right. I mean, an 18 year old, I was living with my parents and then in college. And then I went back to living with my mom just to save money. I mean, times were different eight years ago, it was certainly easier to get on your feet. I mean, it's more expensive now, but at the same time, you know, you got to figure it out. You got to get a roommate. You got to live at home with your parents. You got to try to save your money. Yeah. You just got to figure out your own situation. I think people comparing themselves to the people that you post on your page are a little silly. I mean, everyone's situation is different. Exactly. And you don't know their life, right? So there might be only one person doing the tour, but they might have roommates, you know, and normally I would say if they do, or they would show off their roommates places, but that's not always the case. Mm -hmm. So people are looking for affordable housing. Would you say that's your number one ask on your page? Not number one. What's number one? Um, honestly, it's just, it's more tours or places with personality have actually been my number one places with personality meaning what like they don't want to see your typical you know gray Uh, walls gray you know like the they want to see people who are decorating with a different style or niche or and you know what it's really hard to find that well yeah (laughs) it's probably very hard to find that especially because you're focusing it seems like on rentals right you don't do a lot of hey i own my home and it's yeah actually so the reels click on the reels tab again so there is a process to that madness that you see of all the different colors um oh interesting yes so anything that is in green is owned Anything that you see in light blue is a rental. Anything mm. that you see in orange is a listing. And then the dark green or huh, dark green, the dark blue, those are kind of a little bit more features in terms of whether it's a business or something like that. Interesting. Cool. Yeah, so, so it's color coded. It is. I am going through a rebrand. So the colors will be changing and there actually will be a key that's located on the, um, what is that called? There will be a key on the front page in a highlight. There we go. That's what I'm thinking. What can you go down, t- Tyler, to the townhome in West Shore? Yeah, Dana. Yeah, click that one. What's he paid? Four twenty. She. she. <laughs> oh, no offense. Totally dressed like a dude, but that's cool. <laughs> oh gosh. Hey, that's cool. Nothing wrong with that. I appreciate that style. Especially the thumbs up. That was very like. Oh, yeah. She's so I actually know her from college. Oh, do you? She's a friend of yours. Yeah. 
Tell you what, that's a great location. Oh, yeah, it is. Dan is single asking for a friend. I love it. I love it. People are hilarious. Look at those high ceilings. That's a nice setup. Now, what did she pay? Do we know? Or you oh just gosh, put current gonna, value? I just put current value, but I do know that she paid in the threes. In the threes. Like in the lower threes. She did fantastic. Oh, yeah, 100%. Majority of the people who I am showing post have at least $100,000 in equity. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's well, think the good about news it. about all this. You know, if you've, pur if you purchased in, even if you purchased in 2020, I mean, your values have already increased. Mm -hmm. I mean, 2019, they've doubled. Right. Which is insane, but it's true. Yeah. That's the good thing too. I mean, you know, there have been opportunities, <laughs> especially for me too, as a real estate investor, like I've been fortunate with timing to where when I was ready to invest, it was 2017. 2017 was an insane market. I mean, you could buy property. Like the first two little condos I bought for rentals were 59000 a piece. That doesn't exist anymore. You know, so for me, I'm a young Floridian, but I've taken advantage of the growth and the appreciation. So it's not all bad. It's yeah. the, the people who are super young starting out now, I think are the ones that are going to have a problem. But the good news is there's a lot of new projects I know around Tampa and St. Pete that are gearing strictly towards affordability. Mm -hmm. So there's the West River um, development, Rome Yards. That's going to have a ton of affordable housing. St. Petersburg just increased density on 3,000 lots kind of right off of Central Avenue, east or west of downtown. That's 3,000 properties that are going to have multi-unit rentals. That'll drive price down a little bit. I think change is coming. That's yeah. the good thing. Yeah. So let's hope it continues. But I'm also, I'm from a family who has been in real estate my whole life, right? So my grandfather, he started, he was a realtor, he purchased property, right? So mm -hmm. I come from a family who's purchased lots of property and built their wealth that way, yeah. you know? And so it's funny because I had a conversation with someone in the comments. <laughs> Don't <laughs> um, ever do that. I know, right? Uh, the other day and, you know, he's talking about like basically real estate is going to go down and a hundred percent like market, it's a market, right? right? It does go up, it does go down, but the amount that it would go down is not equivalent to like fear to not buy. You know what I mean? Like you're still going to get equity on that property. Mm -hmm. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. <sighs> Here's the thing. You can screw yourself by buying the wrong property rather than buying in the wrong market. I would much mm. rather someone focus on the act. Like, what are you buying? Like, are you buying the house that's falling apart in a neighborhood that's just not well taken care of? Okay, well, that's probably more risky than, hey, it's a solid block home. Maybe it's a little older, but it's got great bones and it's on a beautiful street. Okay, well, that's a, a safer investment. Yeah, People focus on the market too much where they think, oh, prices are high. That means it's going to fall. Eh, not necessarily. Well, There's if we're still looking, a lot of people out there looking. Exactly. At the supply, you know, once again, our demand is still low. So, yeah. and things just got accelerated. That's why everyone's in mm -hmm. a frenzy right now. I think yeah. COVID accelerated what was supposed to happen organically, maybe in the next five, 10 years might be too long, but let's say like five to eight years, prices probably would have been where they are now anyway. Mm -hmm. I think COVID just shrunk the scale and it happened so quick and every young person and every person, you know, you don't have to be young to be affected by this, by the way, but right. I, I guess I, we just use young people because in a sense, they're the most affected because... Mm -hmm. When you're trying to make it, right? When you graduate college, you graduate high school and you're trying to make it and prices shift so quick, you feel like you got effed. I mean, that is the feeling. And I feel that way in a lot of ways because I'm looking for a house myself, like I said. But but that's the issue is, is the quickness of the market shift. Mm -hmm. So if someone's waiting for the market to fall, that might not happen because we're kind of right where we should be anyway in terms of price. Like there's a ton of people moving here. Mm -hmm. There's a ton of businesses. Businesses are open. People, restaurants are full. Things are going great. Like why would prices go down? Right. And two, like the average. So there's this graph that you can look at, right? So the average age of a home buyer is 33. First time home buyer is 33. 
right? So that's almost your age, Mm -hmm. right? So you're talking about, I'm 31, I'm trying to look for a house and I'm feeling frustrated when 33 is really the time that majority of people are purchasing Mm -hmm. that first home. And that's our, that's our generation, right? So that's the younger millennials who are coming into home ownership and the birth time, the birth, what a rate, I guess Mm -hmm. it was what it would be. The birth rate at that time is so high that the graph of the, of the average births is also an indicator of how we're going to see the market. And so with the amount of people who have been born during that period of time, it continues to accelerate. So there will be more Mm. 33 year olds in the next five years than there were five years ago. Mm. Right. So that's, that's an indicator of supply. Can you pull, can you find that Tyler? That'd be an interesting graph to see. And I guess the thesis would be there's more buyers at buying age in the market, meaning there's more demand, meaning prices could potentially go higher than they are. More supply, not necessarily. I mean, yes, more demand. More demand, right? Yeah. 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 Not enough. Well, I think there's also another graph and I've heard a, a lot of stuff about this. We should actually look into it. Maybe not on this show, but maybe a different one where they're looking at baby boomers and retiring age. People are retiring a little earlier. People are not wanting the the following the next generation. Like when grandma dies, the following generation isn't looking to keep the house. Whereas in years past, they would keep the real estate. Oh, interesting. I think, yeah. The point of the data is to show that there's going to be a ton of supply coming out of the market over the next few decades. Huh? you know, we don't want to live in the suburbs in general, right? So I I think maybe the silver lining too is as people pass away and pass down that real estate, that that real estate will be pushed to the market instead of held on to by those by those next generations. So. Right. I think too, that brings up another point of a lot of people think that inflation is really the key indicator. And that's really only one indicator of where the real estate market goes. But I think that's a focus right now because we're feeling the effects of inflation. Mm-hmm. But that wasn't always the case when the market would flow up and down. You know what I mean? Like right. inflation is one indicator of many. Mm-hmm. And it also doesn't include a lot of stuff that really affects uh, your wallet. I mean, it doesn't include real estate. It doesn't include goods and services that are volatile. You know, inflation really only includes certain price levels. And that's why the numbers, what did they say? Like 4%, 7%. The Fed says we try to keep inflation at 2%. That's always their goal is Mm -hmm. 2%. Well, real estate's appreciated how many percent in the last five years? A hundred? A hundred would be double. So could be over 100%, maybe more in some neighborhoods. So I think the problem with inflation is it's a very narrow scope, but it's true. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fact that everything else is so expensive at the same time, homes are so expensive, exacerbates the problem. It just hurts, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think gas, gas is down a little bit. It was like 280. Oh yeah, it's so nice when it's under three. Which was pretty cool. I love it. I know, I have a big Jeep, so filling that thing up blows. My mom has a big Mercedes and apparently that can only take premium. So she gets double whammy. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, but you know, it is what it is. Unfortunately, it will probably continue. I think you have to look at the past, right? You have to look at decades past. There's more people in this country and there will be more because people are moving here because people are having babies. Things are growing, especially in Florida. Ooh. I would almost turn the argument back to someone who said, well, I'm going to wait for prices to go go down. I would almost say, why would you think they would go down at all in any aspect? I mean, in, yeah, real estate and homes, but like, why would the price of cars be lower than they are, you know, in, in 10 years? Like, why would, why would cars go down? Why would anything go down? Everything's going up. That's so, so you just have to plan for it. I don't know. You just got to figure it out and plan for it. But stop fighting in the comments, people. Damn. <laughs> Come on. I mean, fight a little because it doesn't help little. with engagement. But yeah, what's your <laughs> what's your take on that? Do you just sit back and, and eat the popcorn or does it legitimately get under your skin? There are certain statements yeah. that get under my skin, like especially if you're coming after me specifically and I'm in the video for literally <laughs> 0.5 seconds. Um, like people will try and call me out and say, I don't know what I'm talking about. And, you know, just like being judgy. <laughs> but what do you even, you're um, just showing homes. People are so mean. It's stupid. They, they are. 
And so there's just certain things that like really like get under my skin, but majority of the time I really don't, I don't reply. You know what I was thinking about the other day? I was driving. So I live on Davis Islands. I was driving out to uh, EOS Fitness. Shout out EOS on Del Mabry. <laughs> So it's a little bit of a drive. You know, I got to go through downtown. I got to go on 275 and then up to Mabry. Point is, I see a lot of people, right? A lot of cars around me. And for whatever reason, this day I was driving, there was just a lot of idiots on the road. I was getting cut off and this it's person. It's snowbird season. Maybe that's why. Mm -hmm. A lot of out-of-towners in town. Oh, even yesterday on the way home from the gym, this guy was at a stoplight. He was in the turn lane turning left. A lady from behind him drove around him and got in front of him in the intersection and turned in front of him. It was insane. And it gets me thinking, these are the people online. Like, people are people, right? So it's like, who are we really dealing with? Like, why are we surprised there's hate in the comments? Or why are we surprised people say mean things when, dude, just look around. Like, people are dicey. In the That's real world, true. why wouldn't they be on Instagram? <laughs> That's fair. It gave me some peace. I was like, you know what? There's crazies everywhere. That's a good outlook. You can't listen to them. Yeah. <laughs> I just hope that I can use my platform to make a positive impact. That's the goal. Well, I think you are. And I think the reason is you're keeping it real. You know, there's a lot of real estate pages that just show the multi million dollar homes and the waterfront property. And that's fantastic, and it certainly is very attractive, and it's fun to look at all that. I mean, I love that more than anyone. But you're you're showing the real deal. You're showing yeah. the true cost of living in Florida. Well, I want to be authentic. You know, only a certain percentage can afford the million dollar properties. And mm -hmm. what's funny is those actually don't do perform well on my platform. That surprises me, really. Mm -hmm. So people want to see the regular affordable. Well, I mean, perfect example. I post a five hundred thousand dollar listing, and people are all up in arms, like. That's half a million. It's could you imagine if I posted a million dollar home in South Tampa? That's like a shack. Right. You know, like it just doesn't do well if it's a listing. If it is a person who lives in it, it's a little it performs better because mm. like I'm curious, what is a person who owns a fourteen million dollar home? Like how do you live? What do you do? Yeah. You know? And so I find that interesting. Like I think maybe people would find that interesting too. But I don't know. Well, some people don't. We, we've we sold some luxury real estate down in Sarasota and a couple pieces over in St. Pete. And um, they're just regular people like anyone else, you know? Yeah, some for people, sure. I will say, because a question that I get asked as a broker is from agents is, how do you break into the luxury space? Like, I want to mm -hmm. sell the $14 million homes, right? I don't want to sell the $500,000 homes. And it's really a... It's a level of service, right? That agent has to keep in mind that someone that can afford a $14 million house keeps a certain level of lifestyle in every aspect of their life. Like when they go to the car dealership, it's it's a very nice car dealership and they're treated a certain way. And mm -hmm. when they travel, they're probably staying at the best resorts and hotels and they're treated a certain way. So I tell agents, you just have to emulate that. Like you have to match the level of expectation and service. But I will yep. say at the same time, cleanliness. I've seen small homes in odd neighborhoods be the most immaculate, clean, well-organized. And I've seen crazy penthouses just be torn apart and dirty and gross. And so people often think that, oh, this person lives in a $14 million home. They must be really sophisticated. I don't know. I haven't really seen that. People are just people, you know, people just live the way they want to live. The numbers just get bigger and that maybe the expectations and the standards rise, but people are people. Yeah, it's true. Good point. <laughs> they are. Tyler, can you pull back up the Instagram page? I want to talk about, um, kind of your website and the future of your page. Yep. La last we spoke, um, we were getting coffee and you're explaining kind of the next iteration of finding Floridians is to partner with apartment complexes. I don't want to screw this up. Mortgage companies, you explain it. Yeah. <laughs> so I would say it's less about the partnership, although that definitely is a piece. It's more about the user, right? Mm. So I want to make it really simple for a user to see this home tour and be like, I want a home like that. Mm. Or I need to rent that place. That's my place. I want to I call that home. 
So they really, the home tours would be attached to essentially listings, but it's all through AI, right? So I have this home tour with Cameron. So Cameron lives in a one bedroom, it's a Rocky Point condo. Cameron lives in a one bedroom, one bath condo in Rocky Point. And say someone is like, I want to live there. I love that place. Well, what if there's no places on the market in his condo? Well, what this platform will do, it'll actually tell you top three places that are just like this, exactly similar in price point, in bedroom, square footage, et cetera, that are currently available on the market, right? Very cool. Yes. So that's for the buy side as well as rent. It'll be the same exact thing. Um, so say that uh, if you exit out of that one and you go to Samantha, who Sam is that one with the umbrella. So she lives in this cute little downtown St. Pete studio. And it's a really small place. I think there might be like 12 units, maybe more. Um, but say nothing's available there. It'll bring up places that are available within that price point and within that location. Now, this is a rarity. This is a true gem. So the likelihood that we'll find something within that price point and in that location is pretty slim, but it'll tell you the next best thing. Very interesting. And it's done through AI. So is this a website host you're using or, or how are you getting this AI integrated into the system? I have some developers who basically I hired to do this. Um, so it is a website, um, but they're custom built for you for this purpose. Correct. Very cool. Yeah. So it's a six month process of getting here. Um, there obviously is a need for listings itself, right? So I'm not going to be the one who's putting in all the listings. That's kind of where property managers and realtors come into play, right? Mm. So if you have a listing that's for sale and you want it to be featured on Finding Floridians, all you have to do is type in the MLS, it'll pull it from the MLS, and you might have to fill out additional information for the AI specifically. Right. And then, yeah, it'll it'll be pushed out to people who might not look at a video because there's another option. Say you're looking at my page and you're like, oh, I just don't see the house that's for me. Don't see the apartment. But I still want to find a place and make it easier. So there is a questionnaire that you can fill out where it's six questions, you fill it out super quick, and it'll tell you the top three places based off of what you told me that you're looking for. That's fantastic. How cool is that? Yeah, so your homegirl is giving you your top places that you should live. I love it. And for a realtor, is this a free, they can just go in and put their listing? Completely free. Um, there will be a feature of being able to book home tours as well. Um, so that is a paid feature. If you want a home tour done, those are not free, but you can book it through the site itself so that it just makes it a little bit more seamless. Um, and then same with property managers. Um, it is free for the first six months. It's free to post anything mm. on the site. And then you know, that customer, client, prospect is going to be looking on this website. How can they book a tour of a home they're interested in? Are you going to partner with realtors to help facilitate that? Great question. So there's actually a whole process. So really, I wanted to make Finding Floridians like this white glove service of when you're looking for a place, like Finding Floridians is the place that you want to, to be, right? So once you get the results, you actually will have a conversation with some with me or someone from my team. Um, this is on the buy side. So if you're trying to buy um, for rent, you actually will go directly to the property itself. Um, I will be facilitating that, uh, but more so on the back end. As far as if you're looking to purchase, um, I will have a conversation with you. It's going to be very personal, kind of get your journey. Um, and then you will be connected to my team. So there is a lender that you're connected to. Obviously, having your finances in order is key. Um, and then, yes, I do have a team of realtors within the different markets um, that are on my team and um, you'll be directed to. So it's one stop shop, one stop shop. That's awesome. It is kind of a confusing process. I, I get I can sense confusion in the market. Mm hmm. I think partly because there's a ton of people moving here from other states. Other states just do it differently. They come to Florida. How does Florida work? How do I buy a house? So even rent, even rent. Right. Yeah. I, I do see confusion. This seems like an incredible idea because all I have to do is what DM finding Floridians is how it'll work or fill out this questionnaire. I mean, yeah. So you could, 
you can DM, basically it will all be pushed through social media. So on each video moving forward, once it gets released there, you basically can comment rent if it's a rental or home, if it's a, if it's a home and you'll get sent a message directly to the website. So you'll then go to your DMs. Um, and you can then be directed to the website from there. And wow. so you can find those properties that you're looking for and be connected to me specifically so that we can start the process. And how far along in the process do you need to be to go ahead and start and fill out the questionnaire? Do I already have to have my financing and cash lined up? Not necessarily. I think that's, that really is why I have the initial call is figure out where you're at in your process because I want to meet you where you're at. Right. So mm. this doesn't need to be something where, you know, you are ready to go the next month. This is something where you are able to really see, OK, if if because one of the features is it actually tells you what municipality within Tampa Bay and Florida that you should live in. Right. So it's not like, oh, here's the three properties. That's it. It's actually this neighborhood is the perfect match for you based off of what you're telling me. And so it gives you the opportunity to kind of explore those areas if you were to come down. So for example, I had a client reach out. They are wanting to move in August and they reached out in November. We want to move to the area. Don't really know much, but we're coming to visit. Amazing. Fill out this questionnaire. Let's see some different neighborhoods that you've matched to. Let's go look at those neighborhoods. Let's explore them. Let's see what's going on. And maybe that's kind of that step mm, that they need. Got it. So that would be someone who's very early on in the process. What if someone already has a realtor? Like I'm a broker, right? What if I, what if I send you a person? Hey, go fill out that form. She has this amazing AI platform. Let's see what it says. Can I get compensated still? That's a great question. You know, I haven't worked that one out. <laughs> Well, that's an important one, right? Yeah. Because a lot of people do know a realtor or mm -hmm. they have a real estate license themselves or, I mean, the short answer is it wouldn't be that big of a deal because usually the, the listing agent who submits that form is already offering compensation to a buyer's agent. So that might solve itself, but that's certainly something to think about too. Well, no. Okay. So say you're, so you're saying you have a listing. No, I'm saying like, you have a buyer. like Tyler wants to buy a house and I'm his agent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yo, Tyler, like, I know it's kind of hard to find something. I don't really see anything on the market. I've been looking really hard, bro. Why don't you DM finding Floridians and sign up for that, uh, you know, AI system and see what it says. Yeah. Am I screwing myself as a realtor? Did I just give away my lead? Maybe <laughs> not necessarily, I guess, like, I mean, in that initial call, like, say you do have a realtor, right? you right. know, and then you work it out. Yeah. But, out. but the way I get paid is through, ref is through referrals. I mean, that's the main way of which I will make money. Right. Mm. So, so I have realtors on my team who are going to pay me via referrals. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So. I well, mean, but that can be, you could split that with the buyer's agent. You could, yeah. I'm sure, you know, this is all new. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've worked very hard from what you've told me to develop this entire system, but mm -hmm. I'm sure questions and different scenarios will come up and you'll adapt and, oh, yeah. and figure it out along the way. hundred but, percent. But that would be the first thing I think of as an agent is like, Ooh, maybe I want to keep that page hush hush <laughs> if they're not going to pay me. Right. Cause, yeah, cause the fair. reality is a lot of people use an agent to buy a house. I think oh, the statistic yeah. is like 80 or 90% of, of everyone uses well, an agent. if you're buying a house, you'd be kind of silly not to. I think so, but I'm also an agent. So people comment, you're biased, you're an agent, you know. Mm -hmm. But it's true, you want that protection. You know, you want someone yeah. to look out for you. I mean, I think it's definitely something that, you know, say I'm seeing that there are people who have agents consistently and it's the same agent. I'd be like, Hey, let's have a conversation. Right. You know, like if you want to be on my team, great. Or if you want these, you know, like to use it, let's figure something out For where, sure. yeah. yeah. Cause I have to, I have to feed my family and feed myself too, you know? Of course, of course. But I think there's also enough in there where everyone can be happy. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. You know, and just like how Zillow, was mm -hmm. a complete market disruptor. I mean, people don't understand, people that are not in the real estate industry in terms of lenders and, and brokers don't understand how crazy Zillow is. Oh, like yeah. pre-Zillow, MLS was a book. MLS was exclusive to brokers. So 
a guy like mm-hmm. me, like a buyer would have to come to me and ask what's on the market. Oh, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll set some homes up and show you. Well, now you just go on your phone and you can see what I can see. Zillow literally has the MLS IDX feed attached to their website. I mean, frankly, we kind of sold ourselves out. It yeah. was the Realtor Association that gave it up to Zillow. Right. But the challenge that people are having with Zillow, which is why I made this, was it's so overwhelming. It is. What do you I know? do? Oh, I what? found the perfect house. Mm-hmm. Well, now what? Yeah. Do I call and, a Zillow agent? Right. And exactly. Like, who do I call? Yeah. Because everyone who's with Finding Floridians have been vetted by me. Like, they're people that I know. They're people that I trust. And and there is a process to become a realtor with Finding Floridians, you know? So... It's not like this is a random Zillow realtor who might be in their first month of who just a, bought the lead. Exactly. Yeah. You know, this is these are people, same with rentals. These are rentals that have been vetted by me to remove the idea of a scam or to remove the experience of I had a terrible agent. Mm-hmm. And with Finding Floridians, you'll have someone who's essentially vetted and on the team mm-hmm. versus Zillow where they basically, you know, the thing too is Zillow works at such scale. I can't imagine managing people at that scale. They're nationwide, right? Oh, yeah. You're just helping people moving to Florida or moving around Florida. So it's easier mm-hmm. for you to partner with a realtor, check out who they are, have conversations with them, see if they're a good fit, et cetera. Versus right. Zillow, I mean, you just go on there and you're buying a ad essentially yeah. and then getting a random call. A Zillow agent that gets a call to go see a house, they might not even know anything about that house. Whereas if you can figure out a way to have local experts in certain neighborhoods, mm-hmm. whoever that customer attaches themselves to, or I guess whoever you pick to get with that buyer, they're going to have someone that, okay, well, I know that neighborhood. Like this is the neighborhood I service. I've sold a bunch of houses in that neighborhood. Exactly. Interestingly, this is this is similar to a, to the way Zillow hands out leads to realtors. Like you're essentially partnering with realtors for buyer leads, which I think yes, is really cool. That's exactly right. Same with seller leads. Same with seller leads. Mm-hmm. Very fascinating. Early on, uh, when in the beginning of the show, you said that you are no longer a lender. So explain that. I conflict. am technically. I'm licensed, but I'm oh. not actually doing loans. And can you attach yourself to finding Floridians and do all the loans or how does that work? So my family is in the mortgage business. Um, my brother is a branch manager and my cousin owns la la la. Whatever. So they're the preferred lender. They are the preferred lender. Awesome. Yeah. So you've so, got that on lock figured out. Yeah. You got the, the Carter long and you got the Cooper long as your lender. <laughs> <laughs> the longs. The longs. So can we actually see this form? Is the form out yet so we can explain the six questions? Oh, bu- like the buyer? questionnaire? Yeah, yeah. yeah, go to I'd, the website. I'd love to see what you're asking. I can I can read it here. Yeah. So, so this is the this, new website. Yep, this is the front page. Uh, there will be like s- slight differences in terms of like, um, I just finished my photo shoot. But go to the let's get started in the center. This is where it starts. So obviously we probably want to buy. So buy a home. This is still prototype. So you'll type in, obviously being a lender, I know that budget for your monthly payment is probably the most important factor. Mm -hmm. Although people don't think that it actually is. So there will be a, essentially when people are putting in listings, there's a mortgage calculator on the back end. That's going to tell them how much it's going to be per price per month. Um, so do something. Whatever. Yeah. Do three, three to four, two to three is not going to get you anything. It's Ty. fine. It's All okay. Right. Um, and then what type of home are you looking for? Um, just use single family or townhome or really you can select multiple. Um, then number of bedrooms, you can put any press any. Oh, okay. And then if you prefer to be city, country, suburb. Now, can you select multiple here? Probably, right? Nope, not there. You yeah, have- so this is this is dialing down for you really what someone's looking for. Oh, yeah. Versus like a broad, well, we're not, like this this lead, right, will come in pretty narrow versus like, yeah, we're thinking about moving to Florida. This is not what that is. Well, Although it, can, someone could, it can be. Yeah. Let's just keep going. So, right, so this is a little bit more of more specifics, right? So walkability, 
closeness to restaurants, this is kind of going to hone in a little bit on specific location mm. uh, because obviously this differs depending upon where you're located. Right. And this is the part where AI comes in because it's going to yes. capture all this information. Yeah. The other thing's easy, but this is more specific to what you're looking for. And then same with amenities, right? So you can <laughs> new renovated. That's a grammar error. Uh, which part of Florida do you want to live in? Just so do just west. do, yeah, the Gulf. Let's start. So AI is now gathering this data and searching your inputs, correct? Yes. This is so cool. This is the first time. Okay, so um, like I said, this is a prototype, right? Right. So Magnolia Heights is what you matched with. That's the municipality, the neighborhood in which we think would be the best based off of your criteria. Mm. So you can go to the first listing, right? So you can click on the first listing. You are able to see everything about that listing. Um, this right here, the neighborhood grade is pretty cool because what it tells you is more specifics about that neighborhood. What are the schools like? How did, how, what's the crime rate? You know, things like that. It's going to kind of give you a grade as well as show you where it is. Um, and then obviously like a little bit more specifics about it. You can look at photos, et cetera, et cetera. Um, if you scroll down a little bit more, it kind of gives a little bit more specifics. This is all, once again, prototype. Right, because I think this is in Texas, it said. But yeah, like you is, said, this prototype. is just data that we put in um, until we basically open it up next week to realtors to really put in the information. Why use realtors to put in the information? Why not attach it to the actual MLS feed? Because I want to be able to be picky about what's on my website and what's not. Mm. So I will be monitoring. Um, Is so that going to be hard to do at scale, though? I mean, that's a lot of listings, right? Yeah, I mean, I think they're, I think. Quality I, first, it sounds like. Quality yeah, first. Quality and is go from important. There. Yeah. Yeah, and obviously there's going to be things that have to be ironed out as time goes on. But, um, but yeah, so then scroll back up. I think it's really cool. go back because you want to, um, oh, that's a good thing. I need a back button. Then if you see how it says like unlock premium insights, click that button. So now you'll be able to see, um, I hope this works. Yeah. Okay. So this is where you would then create mm. a login. So you would sign, press the sign up button at the bottom and where you're going to put in all of your information. And so once you do this, you can exit out. Um, it actually will fully normally unlock you might have to actually sign up it'll unlock all listings you probably can view details it's probably open um and yeah and so you can view all the details mm, yeah. of every listing so that's how i'm obviously capturing to me what makes it different is the the neighborhood grade where it's safety schools convenience where is it getting that data from is that the ai part that you're, you're talking about no so that so are you familiar with ai Kind of. Okay. I'm like very elementary. So I'll share my elementary Perfect. version with okay. you. So from what I understand, AI has to be fed information and it learns off of that information to then produce further information, right? Uh. So this is actually something that we're feeding it. We're telling it, these are the neighborhoods. This is what the grades are. This is what all of these things are. So it's absorbing all of like, so the developers have taught it. Magnolia Heights is this neighborhood and this is the type of information that it has in that neighborhood because then that information is what's going to help when someone's filling out that criteria to be matched with the property. Mm, interesting. So it's user input on, hey, this is a good neighborhood. AI now remembers that. No, so we've told AI the details of the neighborhood. Mm. So we've educated AI on the buried utilities versus not sidewalks versus dirt, like et cetera, the, the, small stuff like that. Yeah. The municipality of Tampa Bay. Interesting. So it'll actually improve over time is mm -hmm. the idea. And there's 200. So in, in Tampa Bay alone, there's 252 municipalities, right? So, I mean, think about St. Pete. I feel like St. Pete does this a little bit better than Tampa is a little bit more spread out. So St. Pete, right? I I live in Magnolia Heights. 
literally I could walk to the next neighborhood, Allendale. It's across the street, Mm -hmm. you know? So St. Pete has a lot more neighborhoods. And so that's really what we're focusing on is the neighborhood per se. Mm. It's like, for example, South Tampa, you know, you have Bayshore Beautiful, you have Mm. Ballast Point. Like there are a lot of neighborhoods within that. And so it's really going to break it down based off of what is actually in that neighborhood. And so that grade is really what's telling the AI of what is in that neighborhood. Got it. That's really cool. So the idea is even if you've never been here before, you mm-hmm. could ideally, when it when the AI learns what it needs to learn, you could input your information and find an exact match for yourself. Exactly. That's wow. the goal. Really, really cool. But then too, if you go back to the results, Tyler, say you get this and you're like, I've actually been to Magnolia Heights and it sucks. You can change your results. So not happy with the results, you can change it. So and it, then it'll refresh. It'll refresh. Ah, yeah. Okay. Um, so this too, like at any point, you know, you can talk with me. So basically it would trigger something stating that you're trying to get a hold of me or wanting to move through the process. And so there is a contact us page where you can do a lot of different things, right? So say you want to buy or sell your home, say you're looking to partner with me, you want a home tour, kind of it all like streamlines it all together. There is like different parts. So if you click on the home tour page, Um, that's where all of the home tours will actually located. Um, this is just stock images right now. And you'd be able to filter through, um, based off of location and some other things that you might be looking for. Interesting. And so when you click on it, good job. When you click on it, it brings up those top three properties based off of that home tour video. Ooh, really cool. So it'll track what home tours you enjoy and feed you more listings. Well, you have to click on it. Right. So you click on the tour and it'll tell you um, based off that tour here. Are the, okay, great example, right? So Cameron's house isn't for sale. We watched that earlier. Cameron's one bedroom condo in Rocky Point, it's not for sale. He doesn't plan on selling it. But if they were to click on that video, it would give them the top three spots that are currently listed on the market that are available just like Cameron. Very cool. Mm-hmm. Very, very cool. Interesting. I imagine you get a lot of DMs already about like, oh my gosh, like, let me know if this guy ever wants to sell or... Actually, no. Really? Yeah. Huh. That surprises me. I think because it really does show the personality of the person in that place. So maybe it's... they. I don't know. I've actually never thought of that. Why in the beginning did you, have you always attached yourself, Carter, to Finding Floridians? Mm -hmm. I wonder if, what's the difference between attaching yourself to it and then making it just like a page of real estate? I guess the personal. Well, who are they building trust with? Mm. The Instagram? No, you want to build trust with the human, right? Mm. So I'm the human behind it. And so people are more likely to build trust with a person than they are a company. Right. And I think Quicker. it's kind of cool they can get in touch with you too. Hey, Carter, mm-hmm. this is what we're looking for. Like that that adds a, I think that adds a level of security. Whereas mm-hmm. versus Zillow, you're like, who am I calling? Mm-hmm. What am I talking to? Right. And I wanted to make it that way. So yeah. obviously the page is me. I'm in every video. And so I wanted to make it feel like, oh, I'm actually contacting Carter. Um, and I, I want to talk with her uh, specifically. So that's really why I wanted to make it. Actually, I originally was not a fan of the home girl being the branding, but everyone told me that that's my tagline. Like I go now out in the streets and people are like, ah, you're home girl, you oh know? Oh my God, I love it. <laughs> so I'm like, you're right. That's like, that's my branding. That's what I've become. So yeah, I really kind of tapped into that. Yeah. Well, I think what you're doing is awesome. And the success of the page is, is proof that it's awesome. You know, people are interested in all this sort of stuff. So it's awesome. You're providing it. And I can't wait to see how this AI learns more. And I, I'm curious to know, I don't know how long it would take three months, six months, I don't know, maybe longer, but it'll be cool to see what it looks like down the road. Mm -hmm. If it'll really, really dial into the specifics. Yeah. I'm, I'm interested to see how it goes. I mean, obviously there's going to be things. So, so just like 
for the future, this will be launching in Tampa Bay, um, February and March only. And then it'll actually start to expand out throughout the state. So every month, a new market will launch. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So I'm going to be traveling quite a bit. So anywhere in Florida, if you want a home tour, let me know. Are you going to start finding Georgians? As of now, no. (laughs) <laughs> Cross your first bridge first, right? Yes. Right in front of not you. say never. I think it would be cool to expand, but maybe not me expand. Mm, yeah. Not your Carter Long, your home girl, but Yeah, you gotta you gotta stick to Florida, right? Yeah, but finding some other people who would be interested in bringing this to their market. Hit her up. Hit the home girl up if you're interested in scaling. Yeah, maybe not yet. Catch me in a year. <laughs> well, thank you for coming on the show, Carter. This was really cool. I love what you're up to. It's awesome. Um, do you want to just tell people the website name, social media, all that they can look you up? Yep. It's finding Floridians on everything. Easy. Easy. Finding Floridians.com. Correct. You got that website too? Yeah, dude. I got everything. Damn son. Damn. Yeah. So this it. will be just www.findingfloridians.com. Um, and super this will easy. drop what you said next month, right? Uh, yeah. February. I don't, this episode will come out in a couple of weeks. So probably by then right around that time yeah so it will launch to realtors the first Mm. and property managers um and then about a week later it'll launch to the public to the user because there's a back end portion to it for realtors um that they can go in and actually put in so that part of it's kind of automated like any realtor can just go in the back end and and upload yeah so if you go back to the website there at the bottom of the just scroll down um, it'll say realtors and property managers. I don't mm. know if it's open, but you can click on it. Yeah, you can click on it and it'll actually open up a back end. Um, it's not open at this time, but it will be. But that's the idea. A realtor yeah. could go on, post their listings. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Okay, Carter. Appreciate it. Good to see ya. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you guys for watching this episode. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like it. Check us out on YouTube. Subscribe to our channel. Give us a comment. Give us some feedback. We want to know how we're doing. Thanks for watching. Bye, everybody.